<laughs> shall, shall we? Yes. Shall we dive in? I haven't given you a hug yet, though. Oh, okay. Okay. Quick, hug. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Or good afternoon. Is it? It's afternoon. It's it afternoon. feels like morning, though. I know. It's lovely, though. Yeah. Hi, Susan. Hi, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. And welcome to another episode of Essentials Roundtable with myself, Megan Edge, and my fabulous co-star, Susan Seal. Today we are going to be herbalists. We are herbalist extraordinaires okay. in, in the plural. I'm in. I am so excited for this episode. I've been waiting to do this one. I love herbs. I love being able to grow something that I can then eat. I know. It's you so can grow cool. it and eat it. Right? <laughs> it's, it's so simple. It's so simple. And I was, I'm really fortunate to have grown up in a family of foragers. Mm -hmm. My father and my mother. I'm going to start crying. I knew this was going to happen. Uh oh. Because <laughs> both my father and my mother are now passed on. Mm -hmm. And now I get to pass on their knowledge to my children. You Do watch they like how you learning? Say pass on, though. Pass on? Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get to teach my children? Share. Share? Why can't I say pass on? Because you just said your father oh. and mother passed on. Okay. My father and mother have died. <laughs> so that, like that's about as clear as you can get, right? They're dead. Um, your children are not, and you're able to not. pass on the knowledge you learned from your mother and father. That's and right. Do they like receiving the knowledge, or are they ready to? Do they, they love like, it? Oh, mom. No, they love it. Okay. They love it. They, they, yeah. <laughs> they think it's really cool that they have this witchy mom. Oh, cool. Who knows all these cool things? And as much as they occasionally roll their eyes when I say, "Okay, let's get the oils out." You know, you've got a cough, you've got a burn, you've got a scrape, you're feeling depressed. Okay, let's get the oils out. You know, and they're sort of going, oh, okay, mom. But they're also really thrilled about it. They're mm -hmm. excited that they get to have this knowledge passed on to them, shared with them, passed down to them. <laughs> <laughs> to have it. To In have the it. They get to have it. Exactly, exactly. And they love gardening. And I, what I wanted to be able to do was teach my children where things came from. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people in the world, not just children, but there's a lot of people in the world who, thinks, who think that food comes from the grocery store. I know. That's where meat comes from, that's where fish comes from, and that's where... It's kind of funny, isn't ...vegetables it? come from. <laughs> but where did they come from before that? Mm -hmm. And all of these, what we're going to be sharing today with the herbs, the herbs grow wild in their native and natural environment, and wherever they've been brought around the world where they can grow and thrive. So you can walk down the street and pick up rosemary, thyme, oregano you probably don't want to pick it up if it's low to the ground and there's dogs <laughs> around <laughs> i'm just saying so if you're harvesting and foraging in the in the city as an urban forager you do want to be careful of that <laughs> that's pretty funny and also the these uh, plants are the earliest medicines yes they are not only do they taste good mm -hmm. but they do good things for you and that's what mm -hmm. we're going to be sharing today they're really easy medicines too they're so easy and so accessible. Mm, just, I mean, in terms of everyday wellness, mm -hmm. right? So keeping yourself healthy and making your food taste good, like it's all connected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and honestly, if anyone out there has a, a bottle of Italian mix, like, right. this, is one, this is actually my own homemade blend, but oh, nice. um, yeah, you can make it yourself. It's super easy. Let me smell it. It's, um, it's so good. It smells really good. What's yeah. in it? Oregano, and rosemary, and thyme, and bay. And so you bay took plants from your garden, mm -hmm. dried them, yep. and then are you going to take crush them? This is really can I? Yeah, and also added a drop of each of the essential oils of these herbs into the mix to give it mm. that oomph to take it from mm. oh it's okay dried herbs to oh wow that's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you've got an if you've got a Italian so you mean blend you don't in your have kitchen, to go to the grocery store. You don't have to go to the grocery store. But if you if you have gone to the grocery store and you've got one of those Italian blends, that's that's what it is. It's these herbs that we're talking about, today, common kitchen herbs. That's I'm what so this glad episode there's no is no garlic about. in this. Because often when I go to the grocery store, mm -hmm. whatever I buy that's pre-made or mixed it has garlic in it. That's right. Garlic salt or mm -hmm. dry it somehow dehydrate like and then I can't eat it. And yeah, garlic isn't isn't your friend. No, it isn't. No. Well, then what you can do for something like this is then to add salt to it. So this is herb amare. Mm -hmm. This is already blended. Mm -hmm. And I think it probably does have garlic in it. I'm not sure. You can mm -hmm. check the ingredients. And essentially what it is is sea salt mixed mm -hmm. with dried herbs. Mm -hmm. Garlic, basil, marjoram, rosemary, thyme, parsley, lavage, kelp, chives, onion, cress, leek, celery, and sea salt. That yeah. must be yummy. 
It is very yummy. And so you could make mm. that without the garlic. It's mm -hmm. the only thing in there that you couldn't have. Mm -hmm. We use it on everything. Wow. I love this. So would you ever just make it with the oils without the plant itself? Yes. And when we do our cooking show, we will do that. We will do that. We're going to talk about that. Well, this is one of the books that you gave me, actually, mm -hmm. from Life Science. And these are all of the vitality oils that mm -hmm. Young Living has. Well, they have more than this now, mm. but they're the only company that actually has a line that's labeled for ingestion? Yes. That's kind of cool. Spoiler alert, it's the same oils that are in the regular bottle. Oh yeah, it's the same oil, <laughs> but they label it differently yeah, so that you yeah. don't have to worry. Because there right. are some, like you wouldn't want to ingest wintergreen, mm -hmm. but you're okay with oregano and yeah. frankincense yeah. and lemon and orange. But and you, you could ingest wintergreen. It's it's edible. It's just plant, a very... But yeah, you wouldn't but the want to ingest the oil because it's so because concentrated. It's so concentrated. Right. And I'm sure one drop wouldn't hurt you, but no. it's that... You know, people like to to use things when mm -hmm. they use them, so... Yeah. 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 And when we do our mint show, although wintergreen is not a mint, it's actually a shrub, mm -hmm. but we include it in the mints because okay. it's, people are so familiar with it as a mint, mint. Cool. and it's used in yeah. it's used in everything. It's used in um, toothpaste and mouthwash yes. and gum. Any That's kind of mint, winter um, mint gum is for the body, yeah. usually yeah. a muscle relaxant or a rub. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's awesome. talk about the common kitchen herbs that we want to share today. We are going to be talking about rosemary and oregano and basil and sage and thyme and parsley and dill. Awesome. So. Garfunkel. Garfunkel. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he a herb? He's a herb. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay, so there's sage. I was super excited when Young Living came out with parsley. That was that's amazing. Parsley is such a good well, herb for you. You use them a lot in your cooking, and I don't yes. really. I'm not the chef in our house. Mm -hmm. I. I make smoothies and Dave does everything else. Oh, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that Dave does the cooking because you do the massage on his feet every night yes. and then he does the cooking in the day. So, yes. you know, that seems like a good trade. It's an awesome trade for me. Yeah. <laughs> and for him because I'm not like the world's best cook. Mm -hmm. I can make a great roast chicken though. Oh, that, that's and chicken a, soup. Th and those are really very good things good to be able to make. Mm -hmm. Those are very medicinal. Can make a roast, but <gasps> I forgot to pick oregano from the garden. Oh, I have one here. Oh. No, but the actual plant. Oh. I have oregano in the oh, garden too. This look, is my herb bouquet. Yeah. It's so pretty. I love that. Isn't that gorgeous? So the so rosemary is just sage. starting to bloom. We've got the sage. Rosemary is blooming. Yeah. And I the parsley. Rosemary. Parsley is really good for oral health. Yes. You can just chew on a piece of parsley leaf mm -hmm. and your whole mouth will be refreshed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then thyme, this mm -hmm. little one here. And and each of these herbs has a lots of different varieties. And then also, yes, our, our basil there. Lots of different varieties of these plants. So there's Italian parsley, there's regular parsley, there's curly parsley, there's different kinds of um, rosemary, there's purple sage and regular green sage, and there's an ornamental sage. The thyme, again, all there's just dozens and dozens of different varieties of these mm -hmm. and you can eat them I'm doing it right now <laughs> well this is the thing that I find so amusing the number of conversations I've had with people and the information that's on the internet about these weren't down low right these were not down low <laughs> <laughs> plus Frankie's a girl dog so we're safe <laughs> But there, there's a lot of misinformation out there about what, whether you can or cannot ingest and you, these. And you put them in your water. Mm -hmm. We've got some herbal water. Yes, please. And I thought what we could do with the herbal water is we'll, we'll taste test it with the fresh herbs, then add a drop okay. of one of our oils, and then taste test it mm, okay. after that. Yeah. But here's what I wanted to demonstrate. So here's a bottle of sage oil. And I have to say that the Young Living sage oil is absolutely my favorite, mm. favorite sage. <coughs> and it's different from clary sage. Yes, definitely different from clary sage. Oh, it smells so good. Isn't that amazing? And so many medicinal properties to sage. It's mm -hmm. it's used for colds and coughs and flus and you name it. In fact, all of the herbs are. Yes. It's all the They're antis. All super antis. All the all the super antis. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> super antis, immune mm -hmm. support. All of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. It's well, all, so and they incredible. are all the oils for the raindrop massage too that I do mm -hmm. on Dave's feet at right. night. <laughs> you know, the basil, yeah, cypress, which well, we don't have cypress. That's more a tree. That's a tree. Um, yeah. Oregano, mm -hmm. thyme, wintergreen, marjoram. This one, aroma size. That's a blend of different things and mm -hmm. peppermint. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know they're they're amazing. 
They are. Well, amazing. remember when we were talking about the plague, mm -hmm. the bubonic plague, and how more women survived the plague than men did? Yes. And one of my theories around that is that the reason is because it's the women who were working with the plants. They were working in the gardens with the herbs. They were cooking with the herbs. So their immune system was stronger mm -hmm. because on a daily, regular basis, they were working with these medicines Excuse for their me. families. So if you women, if you want to survive the plague, <coughs> so make sure you're using these every day. Mm. Sorry, I'm coughing. That's okay. So this is what I wanted to demonstrate. To anybody who's concerned or worried or not sure about the edibility of these herbal oils, this is the plant, this is the leaf, this is the sage leaf. Watch me eat the sage leaf. Mmm, <laughs> yeah. delicious. This is the oil that comes from the leaf. Watch me eat the sage oil. <laughs> wow. Yes. Mm. Immediately, I can feel that go right up into my sinuses, clear out the last little bit of that cold I had last week. My brain feels alert. It does. They do wake you up. Very oh, much so. So good. So mm -hmm. good. It's as simple as that. Very simple. Very simple. And as medicine, if you feel a cold coming on or if you're full on in a cold, get a whole bunch of these herbal oils and put them in your diffuser. Absolutely. Just put, don't worry about which ones. Just don't worry about which ones. There. That's right. And it's really interesting, and I don't know if this is intentional, but they're all kind of that dark green, mm -hmm. a lot of those labels. It makes it easy to find okay. in my crazy box full of <laughs> essential yes, oils. <laughs> so the oil that's in here, the reason mm -hmm. it's so potent mm -hmm. is the oils that are coursing through the plant yeah. have special properties that help to protect the plant from insects yep. or they have properties that help to draw in uh, things like bees mm -hmm. um, that will help make the plant multiply. That's right. So that's the potency that you're accessing. That's right. Yeah, it's the, the essential oil is the essential oil that courses through the plant. Exactly. It's a survival mechanism. <laughs> totally. So these are survival oils. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I would say even more than surviving, it's thriving. Thriving. Mm -hmm. When you're working with these oils, when you're working with the plants, when you're eating them on a daily basis, it helps your whole system to thrive. Absolutely. Yeah. When if you it, ever walk into mm -hmm. a greenhouse mm -hmm. that has a lot of these plants and just smell it or into someone's garden yeah. where there's it's lush. Yes. You will feel that energy. Yes, right? absolutely. You, you feel you this, you'll smell it, you'll feel it, you'll touch it, mm -hmm. you'll just be like, mm, yay. Well yeah. when you go into a forest. That's right you know the earthy smells that are all around you and your your body absorbs that your body loves it it loves it, it absolutely loves it yeah well let's talk about some of the individual oils that are common kitchen herbs or common kitchen oils um let's start with rosemary okay okay so this is the rosemary right here this little needle plant this is an evergreen most most herbs, most woody herbaceous herbs are evergreens in our climate. So this is from my garden. It survived that big snowfall that we had a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Same with the parsley, same with the sage. These are these are longevity plants. They they last a long time if they're treated properly and they're in the right the right place. So rosemary, like most of the oils, has properties that helps to suppress or or push away viruses and bacteria and molds and things like that. Supports the immune system specifically it's one of the top neurological oils <laughs> thank you that's what i was about to um, find for the brain for clarity so yes if you can't use some of the others yeah. you could use this one yes right that's what i was looking for was that that yeah. note that this is a brain herb yes yeah. and if to you help with clarity well of the and brain. it's one that apparently if you have epilepsy you maybe want to be not use it so much mm -hmm. go for frankincense mm -hmm. instead yeah some mm -hmm. of more of the anti-spasmodic Mm -hmm. um, herbs. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, why don't you tell us about oregano? Oregano! Oregano! Which I forgot to pick. <laughs> oregano is it's a low growing ground cover. Yeah. And then it sends up shoots for, for its flowers. Well, it's a super anti uh, viral type. Okay, it's a, it really will strengthen your immune system. Mm -hmm. So it's a great oil to have. And people often put it on things like warts or moles to get rid of them right. because it's a powerful thing yeah. so you'd like dip a q-tip in and rub it on that would you remember a few years ago maybe 10 years ago or so that oil of oregano became the go-to for when you had a cold uh, and everyone was putting on their toothbrushes yeah. and brushing their teeth well my mom it or... puts it still on like a kleenex and she carries it in a little zippy bag if she's on a plane 
and she just keeps inhaling. What a great idea yeah, and for right traveling now with yeah. different viruses. <clears throat> Excuse mm -hmm. me. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> ah, it's from the sage. Um, got everything moving. <laughs> Uh, it's a great thing to actually just, you can get those little um, inhalers. Mm -hmm. uh, you should get bags of them on Amazon. Right. And they've got a little cotton wick in them. So you soak the cotton in whatever, maybe oregano yeah. or others. You can add whatever to it. And then put it in and click the little lid on and it's, you. no one else would smell it. Mm -hmm. Right? So right. it's a private, it's a way to keep, to have access to it without everyone else having to smell. Right. Yeah. So it's a natural antibiotic. And actually, studies are showing that it has been effective against um, MRSA, mm. the MRSA mm -hmm. uh, virus. Um, yes, sorry, virus. the superbug. The superbug. Yes, it's it is one you can take internally, but you can't do it for too long, like a couple of weeks at most, and you okay. need to be under care of a physician or aromatherapist. So, an interesting thing when I did my studies, we did learn how to take things internally, mm -hmm. and one of the things the doctor said to us was, because uh, I studied with a doctor, was that prescription medicines are always harsher on a body than oregano oil would be. Right. And you don't think of that, right? Yeah. Um, so it's a good one to take if you're trying to avoid, like maybe, what if you have allergies actually to antibiotics? Because mm -hmm. some people do. Mm -hmm. Um, this is something that you could use because it's natural. You could yeah. try, yeah. right? And you would put it in a veggie cap with a carrier oil and take it with food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your body gets that nutrient. That's right. And it's much more powerful when you're taking the essential oil than eating mm -hmm. it from the plant. So mm -hmm. that's why you know you want to be careful. You don't want to take it too long. Where a plant, if you're just eating the herb, mm -hmm. you can have it every single day. That's right. Yeah. In your food. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the th one of the properties of oregano, as well as some of these other herbs, is that it's also antifungal. Mm -hmm. So for things like skin infections yes. or athlete's foot yes. or toe fungus, you see right. all those ads on the mm -hmm. internet for toe fungus remedies. Well, mm -hmm. you got it right here. Mm -hmm. you put on but as long oil. as it's a good oregano, because some companies yes. are not making a really pure oregano or they're diluting it or fractionating mm -hmm. the oil with something so you're not getting the full impact or it's not truly organic. They're just, yeah. Yeah. We always will recommend Young Living Oils, mm -hmm. for that so very reason. When oils are, oils are made up of, diff they have different constituents of different things, and mm -hmm. it's phenols that are considered a antioxidant, mm -hmm. and oregano has a very high phenol content. Yes. So that's what's making it that's right. that way. At least yeah. that's what scientists say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so it must be true. <laughs> the scientists are saying it. Well, but they have machines, right? Like that's how I know, I that's, know. they have those big machines that they go through, and that's how they know if when like at a, with a company like Young Living, mm -hmm. they will run the oil through and they have all these tests, and mm -hmm. if different constituents are not high enough, right, they actually don't use the oil. They're not going to sell it to us, apparently. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is important. Yes, it is. So yeah. that that's that's the point. That I guess that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it is funny in our culture, though, that we put such um, mm. uh, credibility to the scientists, mm -hmm. and and but in they, many they cases they deserve a lot it. Of other but well, yes, we yeah. need we need the science. We need the evidence. I know. It's it's an interesting yeah. place. It's the evidence versus uh, intuition, or it's the evidence and intuition. Mm -hmm. And the way that I like to work with it is the evidence and the, and the intuition. Because I want to know, I do want to understand what makes it a med medicinal grade essential oil versus just a regular, you know, grocery store essential oil. <laughs> right? <laughs> like that picture that you put in our Essentials Roundtable Facebook group this morning. That was pretty funny. If, if you haven't seen it yet, you go to our Facebook group. Um, <laughs> the Essentials Roundtable with Megan Edge and There's Susan Seal. Laughing emojis. There are lots it. of laughing emojis on that one. It's Fabio versus the couch potato. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, let's move on to basil. Okay. Oh, this is another one of my absolute favorite oh, I know. Young Living Oils. I love this. And I love basil just in oh. general. I, I always have basil in my water when my clients come in. Basil is incredibly good in the cold and flu season for this all the aunties. This is one of the oils in the raindrop massage that I use on Dave's feet. 
<laughs> Actually, I'm using it on Charlotte right now because she has a cold. Lucky mm -hmm. Dave and Charlotte, honestly. <laughs> well, and this is also the oil that's in the... Lucky me. The, yeah, lucky you. <laughs> um, that's in the, the foot chakra mm -hmm. oil that we use in the foot chakra massage. Oh, that's right. The, the I am foot Forgot. chakra massage. Yeah. yeah. And the reason for that is, is all of those good things because it's yeah. antifungal and antimicrobial. Yes. It's also antispasmodic. Wow. So when people have leg cramps... Mm -hmm. This is an excellent oil to use for leg cramps. If you put a few drops in with some sesame seed oil, which is really high in calcium and magnesium, rub it on your feet at night, mm -hmm. and then put your socks on and go to bed, you won't get leg cramps or restless leg syndrome. Wow. Or at least you might not. So it's also an oil that epileptics and people who are pregnant don't use. Which is interesting because it is antispasmodic. Well, I think the but brain it may is be different. different. Yeah, different body and versus muscle. brain. Mm -hmm. Muscle and brain are different. Yeah. Combats bacteria and fungus in the home. Mm -hmm. It's good for cleaning kitchens and different yep. surfaces. Uh, colds and flus. Great to put in a household cleaner. Add some to baking soda and use mm -hmm. as a scrub. What else do I have here? Sore muscles. Really great. Yes. In the bath. Yes. So adding Excellent. to like a bubble bath. Yeah. Or Epsom salts. Yep. Um, Remember when I had that cold a couple of weeks ago? Or yes. started, I felt like I was starting you, to get that cold. I did a big herbal bath. Yes. I put all of these oils wow. into the bath bubbles and then got in the bath. And I bathed in the herbs. Cool. It was very cool. Based. felt great. I based it. <laughs> That's right. I based it in the herbs. It was amazing. It was oh, wonderful. Here's a cool thing. Yeah. So you don't put essential oils in your ears. That's not good for you. Okay. Yeah. You could put it maybe on this part, but it's... I just had somebody email me about this yeah. a couple of days ago, actually. Okay. And I said, she said, oh, well, how do I do this to put it in my ear? I said, oh, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> please don't. And But I said, you could rub. Mm. Like you can, and one of the recipes um, that we learned about was uh, two drops of basil, two drops of frankincense, and then rubbing here. Mm. On, right on the lymph yeah, nodes. Yeah, right on the lymph nodes. Yeah. And, you know, you can, you can pump your ears, but mm -hmm. you don't want to pour oil mm -hmm. in your ear. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is for ear infection that you're talking about? Well, she, she had earwax and she was wanting, oh. but um, in everything I've read and learned, you don't pour essential oils in your ear. And I think some people might pour a carrier in the ear and maybe that's different. I don't do candling or earwax right. thing. I don't do that work. Right. And people who do, I'm sure, will tell you how to do it. Yes. But you don't put essential oils directly in your ear. Right. Or in animals' ears. Right. Um, so, but you can use it very effectively rubbing on the outside. Okay. Yeah. And that would be really good when you have a cold, especially a sore yeah, throat. Yeah, very good. Because cold. it goes directly into the lymph nodes, yeah. and, and that's where, isn't that where the white blood cells come when you get sick, right? Your lymph well, nodes swell, and yeah. then that's indicating that your body's trying to fight. Yeah, your body's the, fighting. That's why we need doctors, so they know how lymph nodes work. Right. <laughs> And okay. then we'll tell the doctors about the essential oils. for a lot more than that. <laughs> okay, oral health. We love the doctors. We do love our doctors. Absolutely. Good for adding to mouthwash or toothpaste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Anti-stress effects on the body was from a study that I read. Um, it inhibits bacteria. When you combine it with fennel, apparently, it's very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of great stuff. Yeah. And thyme is in our list for common kitchen herbs, although we've already talked about thyme. We've got mm -hmm. an oil spot already on okay. thyme. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to reiterate about thyme is how prevalent its use is the oil of, of thyme in cleaning products. Because oh. of the high thymol content, okay. it's okay. very antibacterial. So you could make your own cleaning spray with just simply water and a little bit of thyme oil in the water, give it a really good shake, and then spray your countertops, wipe your countertops down. Wow. And cool. then you get rid of any bacteria, especially after you've been working with raw meat. Oh, time, okay. That's Time will thing. completely get rid of the salmonella. That's the one I was thinking of. Ah, uh, salmonella. Yeah. Yes. So a couple of drops of time if you've got raw chicken juice or something like that on your counter from preparing your roasted so chicken. So you could actually <laughs> make like a little spray for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You just have it in the kitchen and yeah. have it ready to go. Yeah. Just yeah. Sh -sh -sh. As well as ingesting, eating, having this as part of your culinary cuisine and and the oils just using these oils in your environment mm -hmm. so one of the things we've started doing in our dishwasher we, we talked about this a couple mm -hmm. of shows ago mm -hmm. putting a couple of drops of essential oil in with the puck mm -hmm. so that when the dishes are being done the whole kitchen smells has this really amazing aroma doesn't have this chemical so much yeah. that's the thing i hate about dishwashers is the chemical smell yeah so if you put in a few drops of essential oil and we've been using birch oil and oh. it's been getting the dishes really clean cool more clean than the the puck like squeaky clean <laughs> very cool yes i love that <laughs> now young living doesn't do birch oil at least not that i'm aware of yeah don't That's, they no i haven't oh. found it on their 
They don't do birch. At least not, okay. not one that they're selling to people. Right. Okay. Maybe they use it for other things. Maybe. Yeah. So this mm -hmm. is, I'll, I will admit, a little bit ashamed that it is an over-the-counter, or it's a drugstore birch. You know, it's a, but it's in the dishwasher. But it's in the dishwasher, so yeah, I'm not ingesting it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're okay. We're okay. Um, parsley. So I mentioned before that parsley is really good And I have not oily. tried their parsley oil. Mm, here. No, wait, is that it? This is it. They don't have a sticker yet. Okay. I don't have a sticker for that yet. Okay. And their sticker maybe sheets. Maybe they don't make, make them. Maybe not. <laughs> mm. So with this, instead of oregano on your toothbrush, you could use the parsley on your toothbrush mm -hmm. because it's softer than the oregano oil. It's oh, not yes. as sharp. I, I would, yeah, it wouldn't be as fun to use oregano in your mouth. No, but people do. That's the thing. That, that's yeah. what the big, the big thing was a few but years ago. But it really ago. would No, I know, be. I know. <laughs> but you use parsley instead or yeah. parsley seeds. I and mean, this is the amazing thing about parsley. Every part of the plant is edible. The root, mm -hmm. the stems, mm -hmm. the leaves, Everything. the seeds, the flowers, mm -hmm. all of it. Right. And just a little sprinkle in your salad, a little sprinkle um, on your, I don't know, I was going to say pancakes. <laughs> Would you have a sprinkle on your pancakes? Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> so that's some of our common kitchen herbs okay. and different ways that we can use them medicinally and to support our immune system and to just enjoy them and Absolutely. feel really healthy and great. Our next show coming up is going to be the uncommon kitchen herbs. So we're going to continue working with herbs, but now we're going to talk about a few herbs that are uncommon different. in our North America. Uncommon in our North America American kitchens. That's right. Okay. Exactly. Yes. So thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed our show and got some neat bits of information. Yes, on thank these you. And don't forget herbs. to subscribe. Remember to subscribe. I think there is there a button or something below or Remember, something down the there. Little bell. <laughs> a little bell. <laughs> right, the There's bell. a little bell. It's the big red button. <laughs> And we will see you next time. Have a herbalicious day. Bye, Susan. Bye, Megan. Thank you. See you next time, everybody. And scene. And scene. <laughs> Look at an alligator.